there's people right now who are like sitting there going, you know, I'm putting away money to move to Montana or California or back to Jersey or New York. And you're always a little scared. And these stories I'm telling you right now about Colorado in 83, that was the first time I was ever out of New York City. Yeah. That was the first time I was ever not in Miami. I was in another state by myself. I had a roommate, but he was struggling just like me. It's not like I couldn't, I right. couldn't be late with the rent there. Do you understand me? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're saying take the chance, move out. No, no, no. But or, it was amazing. Like walking home in those days in November, and in Colorado, if you lived in those places at night, all you smell is wood burning. Oh yes. And you can hear it. Crackling, right. and you can hear it, and it's cold, but not really, and it's real quiet and serene. And I would be walking in that parking lot, like walking and doing what a twenty-one-year-old doing, skating sure, down half sure. of it. And I remember going, "Wow, what these motherfuckers are really missing." And even though I'm by myself, look at what I'm doing by myself. I agree. I agree. That's the most important thing that people are always scared of. That they don't know if they're gonna that satisfaction of having that closet with that fan. You're eating what you want. You're driving Lyft. Yep, whatever you know, it is. And you're trying to put it together just to prove to yourself. That you and, can... And there's one night where you'll be there with crackers. you have the computer on watching Game of Thrones. And you'll have crackers. And you'll have a can of uh, sausages and a, do a Coke one. <laughs> and you'll sit there and you'll go, how fucking lucky am I? Yep. I'm in Sacramento. I'm in Wherever. Los Angeles living my dream. I might be broke. But for tonight, I'm this good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm not home. I'm out of that bar. I'm out of that environment. I'm out of that. That that's what that 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 part of my life always was. I was ashamed how it ended. They caught me robbing. I planned a jewelry heist. They already knew I was burglarizing these places. I was in deep. They knew, right. but they didn't know. I acted like I didn't do coke. That was my cover. Doesn't isn't that every cokehead's cover? No, no, no. At this time, I was doing <laughs> so that cover. They pretend like they don't do it. At this I'm time, like... I was doing it to to steal. Got it. So they, the finger can never be torn to me. Why would he steal? He don't even do coke. Look at the size of him. He's, he lifts weights and hits a bag every fucking day. He does push ups in between outside like an idiot. I played the pothead. Got it. You follow me? And then I the pothead put, never. And they would snort coke around me, and then they talk, and we go back into their house, and they play darts. All of a sudden, the, come, the guy would come out of the back room with a kilo of coke, and I go, "Here we go, we got a pigeon." And there we go, pilot the bombardier, and I give him like right away. With those guys, you just put them on a hook. You just got one guy. Eventually, you're gonna throw him in there. You just gotta work him and see what's going on. The woman in the house, who his roommate is. I knew the roommate. The guy worked in the fucking golf court that went away for in the daytime, and this guy skied. The apartment's wide open, and the coke is in the bed, in the bedroom somewhere, or in that closet in the hallway there. And I got five minutes. But there's a fucking sliding window in the living room. So I, when I come into place, I'm going to open up the sliding window. I'm going to leave it open just so I have the option to walk out the sliding window if they come to the front door. Okay. So I would always open up my path out before I'd even go for the loot. I'd go for the loot. I'd find the loot. I'd lock the door how it was, and I'd go out the back door. I'd look, pop, boom, and I'd walk out the back door, and I may believe I was looking at birds. Oh, my God, it's a... Silver belly blue chip from Canada. <laughs> Did you learn that door trick the hard way? Like that seems like a, like something that you might have to learn when you uh, like get trapped somewhere. I was really good at it because all the condos were made the same, from building A to building oh, okay, yeah. M. They were all the same cut. If I could break into one door, I could break into all of them. My buddy was an engineer and he made the clips to bust into all the doors. Mm -hmm. But my kooky, listen, I'm not the smartest dude in the world. So one night. There's new people live upstairs, and they're talking about drugs all the time, and I don't really befriend them. I just hear them chatter at parties, how much blow they do, so I watch them when I... Again, I go into the fucking front door, lock the door, the lights are out. I go in the back, but again, it's snowing out. So I get to the, front, the back door, and I slide open the sliding door, and I fucking go to the back, and boom, there's the blow. I see the lights pull up. I close the door, boom, boom. I lock the front door, I go to the fucking back, as I'm running out, boom, I left the screen door up, the one with the flies, so the flies won't come in, and I landed right in the fucking grass, and I just closed the sliding door, and they were right there, and I fucking ran, it wasn't fresh, no, thank God.
That's what saved me. Yeah. It was old snow, so I didn't leave. I just ran. I ran into like the water. I ran across and I went to the Crestwood where I used to work. Mm -hmm. And I saw my friend call and I gave him the coke and I changed shirts. And then he gave me a ride to my house like nothing happened. And the next day there was chitter chatter. Somebody around my house for eight ounces of blow. That's terrible. Did you help him look for it? Oh, yeah. You should have seen me out there putting out posters and yeah, stuff. Yeah, your dog with you. It was fucking crazy, Lee. I was 19 years old, Lee, doing this kind of shit. Jesus Christ. Fucking crazy. Retarded. Retarded. <laughs> Just making, like, that's the thing. It's not like you were in Jersey where you had friends and you could come up with schemes. You were out there by yeah, yourself. In a place, yeah. Just like. Oh, my God. Getting stoned yeah. and thinking of weird criminal shit you could do. Okay, so now I go back to fucking New Jersey. <laughs> oh, my God. I end up living in a playground. I don't do blow for From six From Denver months. back to Jersey. I go back to Jersey. I fuck up completely. I, I live in Jersey till 85. And I moved to Boulder. I got a little loop put away. But, bro, I was a fucking dirty thief. Jesus. I got 10 G's in the bank. I got six grand in my pocket. It's a Sunday night. I'm, I'm walking on the Pearl Street Mall. There's one of those cookie houses where they make <laughs> This is Paul's cookies. They had to <laughs> lift the window open. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday. Hey, that's their fault. It's Sunday. You know what I'm saying? There's money in that hut. You're stealing Mrs. Paul's cookie money? One of those cookies. I didn't say no names. No names, fucko. No names. You understand me? I fucking jumped in there. There it was in the register. I just plugged the register in, pressed open. <laughs> $9,000. $900 in cookie open. money. <laughs> he had opened. That just says what year no, it was. No, I was, such a, I was such a bad thief. I used to unplug the register and take it with me because sometimes I was so retarded I couldn't oh. even open the fucking register. So I would have to go to the car, open up the back door, leave the trunk open, and go out there with the whole register and take it to go. I did not know about the take it to go scheme. What are you talking about? <laughs> Where would you hide the register on your way out? I would fucking put it in the trunk of a car and go. No, step I'm on talking it. about what, when you're running through the mall with the register in your hand. No, no, I wouldn't be running through the mall with the register. The business would be locked. It'd be like an independent business. I go in there, you know. Oh, okay, I thought you were the in the register, middle of the mall. Like the, the they mall. Turn, they turn the electricity <laughs> you off. You can't hold a register they like turn, that. They turn the electricity off so you can't open up the register. So you got to unplug the fucking thing oh. and pick it up. And you got to bring pliers. Sometimes you got to bring cutters with you with gloves. I always had gloves on because you might have to cut it because they they hide the plug underneath. Like they build around mm -hmm. it. You know sure. You drill oh, my holes God. to I must go have underneath. Taken, I must have taken 15 registers in my day. And it's then, hysterical. and I knew nothing about it, but this dude named Tom Panessi, God bless his soul, he taught me he had a missing eye. It was a Westie, one-eyed <laughs> Westie. The guy used to get me jobs when I was like 18 to case joints. And he used to tell me how to steal and shit. He used to tell me how to take care of an ingrown toenail in prison and shit. I mean, this dude was the best. I loved Tom Panessi. He had all the answers. How do you he get a job so, casing <laughs> joints? <laughs> Can we talk about that for a second? <laughs> how do you get what? A job. Casing oh, joints. That's a big job. That's a big Lee. job. Yeah, oh God, that's, that's a big job. I had a dude once, a guy that paid me to just stand by the wall. What do you do? I can't like, just stand joints. by the wall, joints. ten bucks yeah. an hour, and just stand there from six to twelve. And then, but you got a document. Don't go nowhere. It's not easy work. Fucking hilarious. Oh the guy's name was Mr. Boji, <laughs> <laughs> and he used to hire me like three nights a week to stand by the brick wall. Don't move. <laughs> I'll bring you a sandwich in two hours. <laughs> That's I'm surprised amazing. you ever left. That seems like you're the perfect guy. And he used to tell me, one of these days I'm going to get you a job, 12, 15 an hour, sweeping a roof. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that used to be the job you wanted. Come on, Mr. T, get me a job sweeping a roof, 12, 15 an hour. Yeah. What do you do? You just sweep all day. Just sweep the roof every day. It's eight hours a day. Just sweep the same roof. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And, and, then, what? and then just watch everything? Just be like, just Nobody like, sweeps a roof. It's a no-show job, Lee. That's no, oh, I don't that's what it's called. The sweeping the roof. I need a job sweeping the roof. Yeah, Eleanor, you knew that, right? Yes, yeah. I did. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> sweeping the roof. But here was the thing, though. I never even got to this, dude. Was that so? My sister, one time, we lived together for a while, right? And this was probably about eight years ago. She had they had this other dancer that worked with her came over to our place, right? <laughs> Stole our vacuum. Right? <laughs> she was on these Klonopins and everything, and then she got all fucking. <laughs> You know, warm under the skin one night on them pills and fucking stole our vacuum. You know, and, and, as you do. I wasn't there when she stole it, but literally, I could picture her probably trying to put it in her fucking purse. You know, like the stick end in the purse and the fucking huge vacuum hanging out. Right, oh. dude. Fast forward, 
year and a half, right? I'm not even living with my sister anymore. I'm in New Orleans for a bachelorette party or somewhere, a Baton Rouge somewhere, or a bachelor party. They got a big fucking money deal, right? They wheel in one of those cakes where the women pop out, like the fake cake, and they pop out and they dance, right? You know? One of the chicks that pops out is the fucking bitch that stole my vacuum, bro, right? So everybody else, I have no idea. I totally forgot about this. Like, fuck you, bitch. Oh, everybody else is tipping these bitches and fucking, ch- you know, shaking both of their ass cheeks at the same time, you know, with each hand, you know, like they're, you know, like doing a really fast. Vote for me. Yeah, 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 yeah like vote for me with both hands. <laughs> yeah, vote for me. And here I am in the background and all I can think is that bitch stole, stole my, my fucking, fucking vacuum, vacuum, dude. Bro, I had half of a nerve to just the whole time just make vacuum sounds in the back, just like. What I was you, so pissed, bro. What'd she do when she saw you? Huh? What did she do when she? She did? acted like she didn't know, and that's the thing I don't like about people. I guess that steal vacuums is when they see you, they act like you don't fucking remember. Like I'm not gonna remember you stole a vacuum from. I wasn't on Klonopins. I wasn't on Somas. You know. How do you even get? How do you get away with a vacuum? Like, do, doesn't someone, if they, rec- if, if if I was in an apartment building and I saw someone who was on, like, Kalana pins with a vacuum just running down the stairs, <laughs> bless you. Oh, well, it's did. half of America. It's half of the neighborhood around here probably is on Kalana What can they give you for a fucking vacuum? I mean, if you came over my house with a vacuum, what can I give you? The, the small 15? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say at least 30. That's like a snow. I, I don't know. If, what if it goes kaputs? After they go down a the block, I'm no fucking vacuum mechanic, <laughs> but I know there's a little fucking belt in there, and whatever that when you hit something fucked up, the belt breaks. Like I used to have a Kirby vacuum, and they come with a package as a belt. I couldn't do it. Like whenever the vacuum broke, my mom had to take it off and put the vacuum on. Yeah, and you got to be like a fucking technician. You got to unplug it, or the vacuum will suck your fingers in. <laughs> so, so nice to you. What, what kind of fucking got a great what vacuum? Kind of fucking Cuban can't fix a vacuum. That's what I want. My know. mom, my mom could take the thing. We had a Kirby. When we were when I was a kid, they had like the shitty vacuums you could buy. Yeah. But my mom was such a fucking spec. She was such a fucking neurotic Cuban that she loved she she bought a vacuum. Like let's say a back vacuum in those days, like a top notch vacuum cost fourteen ninety five in those yeah. days. Like in the set well I'm lying to you, it was seventy three. Once we moved back to uh, click on Kirby nice fucking one too. vacuum. One that'll kick on Kirby vacuums. One you could one of the suck your cat's dick from across the room. Something dude. got nice up my one. I still remember being a kid and, and the guy coming over to the house. And my mom and her girlfriend and like a buddy were over there and I'm like, what's going on? They're a lot more expensive than fifteen dollars now. How much? Uh, well no, 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 no. What did I said that the, if a regular vacuum cost fifteen bucks in those days, this was a yardstick. Gotcha. Yeah. Put it on, put it on the thing there. Like this was like it came like in a, when it came to my house in those days at toy stores. Uh, if you walked into like the James Bond dial, one of the coolest toys of the seventies was you got a briefcase. Yeah. Okay. This briefcase, Lee. Check this out. There was this briefcase as a child. Okay. That for like I don't I don't even know what it costs. I don't. That's why we get into prices. Briefcases for children. There was a briefcase. It's, it was a plastic briefcase. Yeah. If you wanted to be a secret agent. Right. And it was based after James Bond. They couldn't say 007 on it. You ready, Lee? And on the suitcase, the cool thing about the suitcase is that mm-hmm. it had a button on the handle. Right. So you could press the button and a plastic bullet would come out and shoot no. you. Because in there was a gun with a silencer oh connected to this hinger. Mm. It was all, you know, for 10 year olds and 12 yeah. year olds. Oh, for children. You want to be an asshole. Yeah. You know, oh, you, I thought this is something a no, business no. man so would I'd have. pick it up and go, and it would hit you in the chest and you go, motherfucker. Yeah. And you would have the same gun. I was a bank robber. But in there came like handcuffs, a rope. Like all secret agent shit, yeah. like a telescope, magnifying glass. Yeah. So mm. my point Some is, gum. when my mom showed me when this guy came over, mm-hmm. what what got was so cool about Kirby vacuum cleaners at the time, was that it came in a fucking box, mm. and it came. See how all those utensils? Oh yeah. Like all those utensils That's right everything. there for the for yeah. the for the four twenty nine one. Yeah. That fucking vacuum had a beautiful case mm. that you opened up and all everything was neat nice and neat yeah so we had a kirby vacuum growing up bro. and that was nice it, it was, was nice it your was classy house, your house was always clean look you had all the brushes all the things for yeah. the furniture see the belts who the fuck do you think you're dealing with 
Uh, do you think you got? Look do you think you belts. fucking guys are fucking dealing with? You see the little circle what belts? What do you think those are wristlets, dude? Those are fucking belts. Do you think, see what I'm saying? He what the fuck? That's what happened. The Kirby vacuum should be getting a vig for all these assholes that wear these braces and put, you know, yeah. help the fucking homeless and uh, I think the it, sharks. It, water it, for the blind and I, shit. I, yeah, I have water for the blind, bro. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know how to fix that. No, it's a listen. When the thing breaks, it's real fucking easy. I was just dumb. You take off the grill, bop. You take it off the loop, okay. And then you rem you take the the old one up, snap. Mm -hmm. It's like if I take a rubber band and cut it with a scissor, it just snaps. It's just one sh one rope. Then you take that and you loop it on something, and you loop it back on the thing. You close the vacuum, and your thing is tip top. Mm -hmm. So I can't believe that they still didn't uh, take away their loop. Do you people think I'm over here dropping knowledge with no fucking knowledge? If I tell you about Kirby vacuum, it's because fucking it's the shit my, my doodle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what the fuck you think you're dealing with? Dude, some I, re I remember appliances used to just be so much more hardy, bro. The vacuum, you could ride on the fucking vacuum. Remember that? If you were a little kid, you could sit on there where your mom was pushing and ride on Like It was like a piece of fucking metal. I love vacuuming. Yeah. Till this day, I vacuum at the house. I love it. There's something soothing about it. Something about vacuum. I don't like when it's too Like my wife, She's part of the fucking technology world. So we got a vacuum. That like mows by itself? No. No. That thing's a piece of shit. But the fucking vacuum's got a thousand things. I'm scared to fucking touch it. Yeah. Then she's got a rug cleaner because the cats piss everywhere. Yeah. So we got to have a fucking rug cleaner constantly. And what? Bro, I help her clean the rugs. The, just people's feet. Just us walking around with sneakers. Can you imagine? Your house is filthy. It's filthy, Lee. If you don't mop, like, with hot, hot water every week, you know, we lay down on shit. We drag so much stuff. It's not us. It's not us. It's when we walk to our cars. It's all that shit that we step on. You walk in and out of your house every day. Like, the other day I was looking at, you ever have a wall that to turn on the fucking light, your finger always hits? Look yeah. at that. There's always your fingers in there. Gross. Even though you wash your hands. Boogers, whatever. Semen, no, skin. No, no, it's not like that on my walls. What's the matter? That's when I was 14. <laughs> Come on, dude. Remember when you were 14? But I'm saying on your hand, when you touch the yeah. light fixture, think about a light fixture. Think about everybody's gross hand. Muffin pieces, of little pieces of muffin, you know, sugars, seam, definitely semen. People have fucking semen all over their house, dude, bro. Dude, I, I worked in, a re in restaurants so they make you go through, like, training for that stuff. Yeah. I if I'm ever somewhere and you need to get a soda lid, I never grab the one on top. I always go in. I never grab the first straw. Like I hate. Oh, that's I hate psycho, places. Man. There's places that have just loose straws, not even with plastic around them. I won't go there. That's anymore. why, I like Marie T, they got the paper old school. You yeah, you need the something. Paper in there. Favorite scenes in any movie because the director or whoever thought about it was so brilliant was Godfather before Michael shoots the two guys in the restaurant. The train is stopping. You hear trains screeching. You hear them stopping to pick people up. If you've ever done anything bad in your life, there's a point of the adrenaline that your ears start ringing. You have no fucking idea when your ears start ringing. When, you, when you're doing something and you're deaf from the adrenaline, that's a complete different world. When I robbed that jewelry store with, with uh, Marblehead that time, when I was running up the corner, I was looking at grand larceny. You know, I'm looking at theft. I'm looking at a thousand things. I'm looking basically at 12 and a half fucking years or maybe eight years with good behavior. But I'm looking at time. You, you, my ears were ringing when I was running. Once I got around that corner and those chains were all over the floor and stuff and I was picking them up, I was the king of the world. That adrenaline fear should have made me get in that car and drive away. But I was till till today, when I asked that fucking moron, "Where's the jewelry?" and he goes, "It fell." And I go, "Are you fucking kidding me?" And you just walked up here with this, and I went and picked up those chains. By this point, everybody was out in the street going, "Hey, stop those kids!" Listen, a bullet wasn't going to stop me right there. Nothing was going to... I picked up those gold chains from the back of the car, got in that back seat, and we took the fuck off. We hit a right. We hit 68th Street, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I light the trunk because we were going to put the jewelry in the trunk. But the trunk didn't open. The trunk was jammed, so we had to put it in the back seat. The beauty of it, this is at the first light, we stopped as a cop. 
and the trunk opens up as the cop is passing by. The cop never noticed it, and we fucking got the jewelry off. But that fear I had running around that fucking hill, when I, uh, when I got in trouble in Boulder and I kidnapped Vela, while Vela was in the apartment, when those, him and the biker were there, that Tidwell moron were arguing, and I left him there, when I walked into that house, that was the best adrenaline I ever had in my life. Wow. Because there was a, a guy that opened the door for you, a door guy dressed in an outfit in front of this building. Now, I had just been there an hour before to pick the victim up and to take him to the location. When my friend went over, he stopped him, whatever, and they buzzed him up. I don't know how he got up, but when I went back, from the way I slammed that door, when he saw, I'll never forget the look on his face. My body language, the adrenaline was coming out of my fucking ears because he didn't even say good afternoon. He didn't even open the door for me. I just walked in that fucking building. I got in the elevator, I went upstairs, and I basically walked to the door and kicked it in. My ears were on fire. I mean, my body was just hot, hot. That's that's a fucking great feeling when you're on fucking fire. And I kicked the door in, and they had like a ceiling, and I just jumped up and pulled it down. I pulled the whole fucking, you know those... Uh, drop tile. Drop tile ceilings. Yeah. Like it, the Coke was one of those tiles. I knew the tile. Guess what? Oh. I didn't have time. I just jumped up like a gorilla that I am. Oh, my God. And pulled it down, and the thing just came... <laughs> ah! It was like it looked like nine eleven. Oh you ever see all those God. things hanging? That's how the roof looked. Oh my God. <laughs> like the basement of Tower Four, whatever the fuck it was. There was beams hanging, dust everywhere. When I walked out, I had dust all over my face, oh. my shirt. I had ripped that fucking ceiling down. I fucking picked up that coke and I went in the car. You have no idea how I felt. By the time I got out, I was already that clear. Because it's so funny. <laughs> Lee, how you feeling, Doug? I'm, I'm feeling fine. You ready for another star? Sure, but I'm just like, how, how did you only get That's caught crazy. once? You're, so you're tearing crazy. down buildings. You're he, kicking down doors. Yeah. Just, you're doing 9-11s. You're a, you're a, you're a, you're a fucking, you're adrenaline. <laughs> yeah. Will take you, you, you to places. Sleep. You can't think. You can't think logically. But here's the beauty of it that I've always thought about. Okay, so I parked the car facing whatever the fuck, this direction. <laughs> but when I got the car, <laughs> to my right, but when I got in the car, I noticed that there was a newspaper thing, and already my head was clear. Because when I pulled out of that thing, I crossed over right onto 19th and Canyon Boulevard, and that's where the halfway house is. How fucking, how much of a sign is that? And I went in, I ripped apart the, the, the two kilos, and I took, and I took like a fucking handful of coke out and put it in like a newspaper that I had in the car. That's how much of a primitive guy I was. I took the two fucking packages and I put them under a newspaper thing. So I wouldn't have a mommy. Do you follow oh, me? One of those newspaper dispensers or whatever it's called on the street. Yeah. Not, not a dispenser, but... Those little... Yeah, those little stands you get your... Uh, yeah. Your free paper. One of those... Wrap it down up. the quarter paper. I yeah. Put it under there because I didn't want it on me if the cops pulled me over. And that fucking guy at the door oh. didn't even look at me on the way out. Didn't say thank you for coming, thank you for shopping here. Nothing. Shit. Not the zero respect, Roy Conrad. Jesus. Now, well, you 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 do something like that with that level of adrenaline, you go home. How how long before you can sleep? Because that shit stays in your oh, system. Oh no, I wasn't gonna sleep that night. I had a handful of coke. Oh, between right. the adrenaline, and the blow. Oh, yeah. It was. Uh, they call it adrenaline dump. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. When it's when it's you get it all out, and then it just brings you down. But but coke would bring you right back. Yeah. So but yeah, the adrenaline dump is when you get it all out. It's just like oh, and then and then you get home and it starts to wear off, and it's like real. It goes really low, right? And that's when the soreness comes in. Yeah. That's when you realize, fuck! I dropped the glove in front of Kato's. <laughs> Because you, damn, you, you don't notice the glove when when no, there's adrenaline. That's that why shit. that happened. Yeah, that's why the knife slips. And yeah, it cuts your fingers. Yeah, you know when I uh, was running from the cops and that dog, I ripped my hand open. I got caught on the barbed wire. I had to untake the glove from my skin. No, 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 no. That bean guy. You have no idea. In today's modern world, I would have passed out. But the adrenaline, All right, kept me going. Kept me going. I didn't even think of my hand bleeding. No fainting. No fainting. No fainting. In fact, I went home and left the glove on. I said, why fuck with it? Let me go to the bar with oh, the glove shit. on. 
the glove was filled with blood. Oh, Jesus. I, I got this apartment with Jimmy Burke on. We're sharp. We're making salads every night. We're getting different types of weed every night. There was a dude that just we just told him, you get good weed, just bring it over. Don't worry about the money. Just bring it over. The money will be here when you get here. <clears throat> so every night, as soon as we're about to eat, we hear. Every fucking night, as soon as, <laughs> like if we were cooking like a steak. Like, yeah. And, and listen, brother to brother, you know I ain't going to lie to you. I would get off the bus, and I would walk into City Market, and I would buy like a jar of peanut butter, but I'd have a, uh, uh, a pillowcase. Yeah. And I'd take two steaks, a package of Oscar Maya salami, a head of lettuce. I would pay for the head of lettuce. Yeah. I would pay for the mayonnaise. I would take the two lobster tails, the two steaks, and I'd buy like iced tea mix. And I'd walk, and I'd go up and talk to the owner. How you doing with the lobster tails and the steaks in the bag? And I'd go home, and we'd cook fucking salad with Oscar Mayer mm. with uh, Italian yeah. uh, vinaigrette and the whole thing. I mean, we did this every night, the same fucking meal. That's how crazy I was. But every night, as we were going to go cutting the fucking steak, there was this guy, Ken. And he was from Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and he just showed up Ken always just showed up oh my goodness is that a steak <laughs> <laughs> last time I had myself a steak it was a beautiful summer day and, and he would just go on for is that a bong is that man I haven't smoked marijuana in so long my lips are starting to get and he would have an <laughs> anecdote for everything everything and, my, and I would tolerate him because I'm a comic. You know, at that time, I didn't know anything about comedy, but yeah. he made me kind of laugh. But my buddy didn't fucking like him at all. And he would always say, fucking Ken, what the fuck? You know, get the fuck out of here. And I'd go, oh, uh, you know. Yeah. So no, this went on. No this, one would knock on my door. That's crazy. No, no, no. no. He lived out. upstairs, and he always wanted to know what you were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he always invited you to something. Man, there's a, there's a party up in the bar with the, the band's cracking. Yeah. <laughs> We'll go up there, pick up some bitches. But when you got up there, he was he always left his wallet at home. There was always a dilemma mm. with Ken. There was a by the way. Ken didn't bother me at all. Ken didn't bother me at all. You know, there was times that he would come down, I cut the steak in half and give it to Ken. There was times he bothered him. You know, like I, he got my nerves by telling me a long story about Kentucky and yeah. shit. And this went on. And this went on for about a year and a half. And I like Ken. So one fucking day, now, we lived in the basement, and Ken lived, it's like the the office under yeah. here, and he lived in the office on top, and there was a balcony, and one day Ken comes in, and he shows me, he goes, let me show you something, you know, and he shows me his brand new helmet. Helmet? Yeah, like, well, helmet, and he goes, yeah, didn't I tell you? Like football helmet? No, I'm, I'm a bicycle rider, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sad, now, where do you think I go on the weekends? I ride bicycles, and... And he's telling me all this shit about his bicycles, and, and he shows me his new 10-speed with his fucking cleats and how he's going to run up and down the hill. So I said, where'd you get this? But he's telling me it's a $3,000 bike and all this shit. And, and I go, so come downstairs. Tell me about all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, go, I go, tell me about this fucking thing. And he goes, well, my, my granddaddy passed. And he left me like twenty large, and and uh, you know I, he he left me a note to enjoy myself, and I, I by reckon I enjoyed myself, <laughs> and I bought a bicycle and a helmet and goggles, and I bought some dessert and I bought some groceries, and I said so, dog, what was the story? Nothing from Uncle Joey, <laughs> a little something, something, a bag of weed, yeah. something. I mean, two years. Yeah. This, this was just like, and I didn't. The other guy would get mad. I like thought the guy could He's be been coming me. to your place for two years. Two years. Every fucking day at 6.30 on Sundays. And not even a rolling paper. And then he would go home to Kentucky. You wouldn't see him for a month. So I just asked him one day. I go, Kentucky, what's the story? You know, buy a bag of dope, bring it down. He's like, man, I can't do it. I only got like $800 left. I go, you got $10,800 left? He's like, oh, yeah, I bought this. Badass jacket. I'm wearing it tonight. <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh, really? <coughs> I go, well, dog, kick a fucking, get a steak for me and Jimmy. He goes, nah, man, those days are over. And he just bled out and insulted us. And Jimmy's like, we should just beat the fuck up. Like, nah, 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 nah. Let's let him go out. Oh, yeah. Because he had that bike there, didn't he? No. 
I was going to take the rest of his dough. I know he was cheap and he wasn't going to take it all. He was going to hide it. And after I, no, because I didn't, I had just insinuated to him that he should, Jesus Christ, buy a fucking bottle yeah, of beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got all offensive. And that's when he left. And I was like, look, at you're right, Jimmy. You're, he goes, I told you he's a piece of shit. I go, all right. And Jimmy didn't say nothing about it. I just said, all of a sudden, Jimmy's like, I had a rough week. I got to go to bed. I go, all right, go to bed. And I stayed up. I waited for this motherfucker to leave. It was a Friday night. I heard them, woo, and fucking get in the car and go to Aspen. They were going to Aspen. I went out there and made sure they got on the road. And I went right to work. I wanted to see if his windows were open. Nothing. The ones in the kitchen. <clears throat> I was like, God damn. I had to go around the back. He lived a level up. Thank God I was in shape. I took a couch. I put a chair on top of the you couch. You the balcony? Oh, you know I did, motherfucker. I put a thing on top of that. And I fucking climbed up to the balcony. And sure in money, he left the sliding door open. Or well, maybe not. I think I had to go in there. I was that good in those days. If you had if you had an apartment in that complex, yeah. I was getting in. I knew all the ends because I practiced on my own apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck you think you're dealing with? Yeah. Me and Jimmy was an engineer, so he gave me every angle. I had every way to get into you every door. You practiced on your own apartment. Every yeah. door. I had every door down. Any door you had. We had a tool to get into any door in that complex. Whether the key was on this side or the key was on that side, I had the master to the That's top. Fucking genius! This is it was. I, we had, we knew how to slide the fucking door out. If you had two kilos or something, I'd slide the whole sliding window up. You know me. I'm a. <laughs> we knew all that. Like we were prepared for all that. Plus, I had a dude at that time. I was taking electrical courses, and there was a electrical dude, courses. Yes, like, for what? I, to be an electrician. I, I was going to Colorado Mountain College, and you had to take, like, history and a fucking math, and then you had to take, like, an elective. And my friend said, take the residential wine, bro. You get a job at Aspen Electric. And they paid, like, 10 bucks an hour. So I got a job at Aspen Electric. I did really well. I wired a house, and I got the job. And they put me on a truck with this dude from Minneapolis, and I started talking to the dude, man. And the dude was the real fucking deal, right? The guy used to take me to his house, great wife, you know, from time to time we'd smoke a joint, you know. What was I talking about? I you were that. talking about breaking in <laughs> so, to Ken's apartment. So we became friends, yeah. and whenever it was an electrical situation, I'd go to him. And he'd tell me exactly how to fucking kick a system down, what it was, you know, how to do it. This, I was in a different realm when I was up there at 19, because this was what I wanted to do. Yeah. And now, here I am, in it? I was in it. I had two different ways to go in your house. The stuff around the... But I was shitting him where I lived. That was the first lesson I was learning that I was getting... I was getting... There was, you know, there was uh, A, B, C, D, then E, F. There was like uh -huh. six... There was like nine or ten buildings. I was getting one person in every building. But they were all semi-coke dealers, so nobody could say nothing. Right. I wouldn't get them for a lot. I would set them up for like a three-day boom, 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 boom. One ski season came. You're out of the house. Wait, you didn't take everything? Why? Well, who are they going to call if they're selling Coke? So let's pretend you got three ounces of Coke in the house. Yeah. I go to your house and take a half ounce of the clean stuff. So when you come back from skiing, you're like, hmm, uh, what the fuck happened? Uh, I had that much time. I had that much time. So what'd you get out of Ken's apartment? So out of Ken's apartment, well, no, but Ken's apartment was tough. He knew. <laughs> At that time, nobody knew what I was doing, but he had an he idea. He fucking knew. He used to tell me, man, somebody around here is burglarizing these apartments. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, yeah. And I would go, that's fucked up. <laughs> and then I went into his pad I mean everywhere. The bicycle, I looked behind the bicycle, there was a pouch. Yeah. I looked everywhere. The closets. I went downstairs, and I'm like, fuck, I didn't look in the bathroom. And I went right back upstairs. I left the door open. 
because I would hear him and I'd lock the door and then jump out of his back thing. It wasn't in those days. I didn't care about a ten foot drop. I was only one ninety five. Mm-hmm. I could do a ten foot drop all fucking day. <laughs> so I said, "Fuck it, let me go to his bathroom." I went into his bathroom, looked in the shower, looked in his slippers, the fucking door. I opened up the candle. Nothing. He's got pills in that thing, but he's got those cans of band aid. Mm. Chachu. Yeah. A little can of band aid, Lee. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Look, look at Lee. You don't even know. You know what the can of band aid looks like. Can of, now it's cardboard. Yeah. But back but in it was the like day, it was metal. Yeah. No, the I, hard one. Yeah, they're the tin. And back in the day, they didn't have the tin. It just sealed. Yep. Bro, I opened it up. I looked in there, and there it was. Ben Franklin after Ben Franklin. How many? After ben, eight of them. But I knew it would break him. It was the last of his geeters. Take it all? Every single <laughs> time. <laughs> Now, if he would have bought a steak, I yeah. would have taken a deuce, just his tax, Wait, if he and closed the seal. Yeah, if he bought a steak, you still would have broke in. Sure, just for, just to <laughs> test my knowledge. You know what I'm saying? In those days, I told you I was 24 seven. I had to test my knowledge. <laughs> Even my brother Lee, I would have gone into your room. He got, yeah. He's got two thousand. All I need is fifty five dollars. He ain't gonna bother. He ain't gonna bother me. Yeah, shit. you know what I'm saying? He's my little dog. Yeah. Look at him. So you you got eight hundred, and did he come down to the apartment? The next day, with a piece of like a scotch tape, and he goes, "Diaz, wake up, wake up, man! I got home from dancing last night, and somebody broke into my goddamn house. But, but I got a fingerprint <laughs> off the balcony, and I knew I wore gloves. Yeah, you know yeah. me, I was a kid. <laughs> In those days, I had like the boxing gloves in the back. I had a, yeah, I had a wait." I had a, I had a. Fun. You broke in wearing boxing gloves. No, what are you retarded? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, if it's two in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes. Thinking that you know I'm gonna re- I'm gonna reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5:30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?